Hello again. We had done arithmetic uh, sequences. Well, this is a good complement. Uh, this is something called arithmetic series. And a series is different than a sequence. Uh, in the last uh, you know, lessons that we did with sequences, we said, okay, what's the next number? Or what's the next number? Or what's the next number? Or what's the next number? What's the next number? Well, you know, somebody came along and said, well, instead of figuring out what the next number is, I want to add all those numbers in that pattern. And that's what a series is. It's taking a sequence and it's just adding all the numbers up. And you can have finite uh, sequences, a finite series, part an infinite, but that's when we talk about converging and diverging. It also relates to calculus, etc. You know, one step at a time, to say the least. So, this is actually pretty interesting because I always uh, post this problem to my class and I ask them this question. It's a very good introductory lesson. Uh, and I, I, I ask them this task. I say, you know, and of course, I say things as I'm waiting for them. And, you know, eventually some people figure it out quicker than others, but whatever. I don't really give that much time anyways. I say, suppose I've got a, uh, a sequence. It's a boring sequence. And I go, okay, what's the sequence? You know, like that, like assertive. Like, Don't be assertive. Just, just listen to what the sequence is. One, two, three, four, five, etc., etc., etc. Now it does stop. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, hundred. And then I say, I ask them first of all, is it an arithmetic sequence? And they say, yeah, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Yeah, you're adding the same number over and over. Fine, that's cool. Um, I'm like, okay, good. I want you to take this um, sequence and I want you to treat it like a series. And like, what do you mean? Well, it's the exact same thing, except instead of just listing out a number, I want you to find a sum. And then I write this down, plus blah, 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 blah. I didn't write the five, who cares? I want you to add up all the numbers together, one through a hundred. And then uh, usually a student in class will say, man, that's too difficult. I can't do that. And then I say, well, go ahead and try anyways. And some people just rip out their calculator right away because they want to be the first one done, which is pretty cool. And uh, while you're trying to get everybody to buy into it, I say, well, there's a story about a, a young boy. I believe he was in second grade at the time. And I can't remember if it was Newton or Descartes or Pascal. It was one of those mathematical geniuses. And I guess he was misbehaving in class. So what his teacher did was, you know, he said he sent him out, he said, get out of here, don't come back until you do this problem. And what he did was he, he gave him this, he said, I want you to add up the numbers 1 through 100, and I want you to tell me what the sum is, you know, add them all up. And when you can finally figure them out, you can come back in. And, you know, there's no calculators at the time, and like, the kid's in, you know, second or third grade, so you imagine it's probably going to take a long time. And the kid comes back after, like, uh... I'm going to say 30 or 45 seconds, it was something like that. He hands his uh, teacher a piece of paper, and you know, the teacher is upset because he says, you know, this kid doesn't even listen to my directions. And he looks at the piece of paper and it has a number on it. And he says, what is this? And, you know, the kid, well, I don't know what his name is, but I know he's a famous mathematician. You can look up the story yourself if you want to. He says, this is the answer. This is what you asked me. And the teacher went ahead and asked everybody in the class to go ahead and try it, you know, to verify while he was doing it too, because the students had it on track. And it turned out that uh, the young gentleman was right, and the answer is uh, 5,050. And, you know, the kids are kind of like sitting there like this, or the students, some of them are like, wow, you know, like, how did he figure it out? And basically what he did was he used this formula right here, the, the sum of an arithmetic series. Uh, there's actually another formula where you don't need to use a sub m. I don't like it. So I'm going to use this one. That's my personal preference. If you were happy to do the same thing and you don't like this formula, that's fine. Whatever. And uh, when you add up all these answers, it comes up to 5,050. And, uh, you know, as a joke, a student says, were you that kid, Mr. Shahadi? And I say, no, I wasn't that kid because, you know, that person was long dead before I was born. But I ask the students, like, you know, what approaches did you take to doing this? And some people say, well, I took out a calculator and I added them. And some students are, mm -hmm, did something. I don't know what it was. But, you know, usually calculator is the predominant answer. And I remember when my own teacher posed this to us, I didn't use a calculator because I'm just stubborn anyways. I'm thinking to myself, it's got to be some sort of test. What I had done, and I, I show this to my students too, and they think it's kind of cool, is I say, did anybody try this? You know, taking 1 and adding it to 99, and that's 100. And adding 2 to 98, 
and adding them together, and that's 100, and 3 and 97 is 100, and you got 100 here. And when you keep adding them up, the last uh, combination you get is, yeah, I guess combination, 51 plus 49 is 100, and then you have a number in the middle, which is 50. Well, it turns out that there's uh, 50 sets of 100, and the number 50 is in the middle, so it's, uh, it's uh, 50 times 100, which is 5,000, plus the extra 50, which is 5,050. And when I did this problem, I'm, you know, I'm ashamed to say that I couldn't figure it out in 30 seconds, but I, you know, give me about a minute, 10 seconds, I can figure it out. And that's the strategy I use. And you're like, well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, it's the same uh, thing right here. This is, this is basically the same premise, except it's much faster and it's considerably more brilliant than I could have possibly thought of. So I'll prove that right now. Now the S stands for uh, the sum of the series. Uh, the sum of the series. A sub one stands for the first term in a uh, you know a series. A sub n stands for the last term, and n just stands for whatever how many ever terms you're adding up. So if you're adding up ten terms, it's you know one plus two plus three plus four up to, until ten. If it's S sub one hundred, you're adding the first hundred terms together. So therefore, n is also one hundred. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, from this problem right here, I want to figure out. S of 100, which I don't know, because even if I, I can't substitute it, I'm trying to figure out the sum of all of them, equals N is 100 because it's, you know, the first 100 terms, and because N was also 100, times A sub 1, which is 1, plus A sub N, which is 100. all divided by 2. Now what I recommend for my students, and I'll go ahead and multiply it out so you can see it too, is actually to take care of 100 divided by 2 first. Now don't, don't add in this, especially going to try it in your head. If you're just using a calculator, then you're just using a calculator. It's 50 times 101. Catch those Dalmatians! Somebody usually laughs, but how many people do actually? I thought that was pretty funny. Most of you probably don't. 101 times 50 is 100 times 50 is 5,000, so an extra 50 is 5,050. And there you go. Actually, instead of catching those Dalmatians, I meant to say catch those puppies. <sighs> Another bad joke. So, anyways, that's what you do. That's what you can do to figure out this formula. If, as long as you know how many terms you're trying to figure out when you're adding them together. You know your nth term, you know your first term, and then you just plug in and substitute. Now the question is, like, what happens if you don't know your nth term? Well, there is a formula for that. You use this to figure out your a sub n. a sub 1 is usually given. Substitute everything in. Usually pretty good. We're going to do one more, eh, maybe two more, but probably one more lesson really quickly on arithmetic series because it's actually worth noting. Other than that, I hope that was helpful. Have a good day.